This is Chaitanya Bhagavat, Auntie Leela, chapter 5. Verse 493, we're hearing about the Advaita, the Advaita Prabhu Nityananda Prabhu Milan, Leela, and Shantipur and Dham, West Bengal, 525 years ago. Advaita Vakya Bhuji Bhara Shakti Kar, Janiha Ishvara Sane Bheda Nahi Janra, who has the power to understand the words spoken by Advaita Charya in his glorification of Nityananda? Indeed, Advaita Charya himself is non different from the Lord. Hena Mate Dui Prabhu Vara Maharanghe Viharena Krishna Kata Mangala Prasange Mangala Prasange Prabhuvara Maharange. In this way, the two Prabhus, Advaita Prabhu and Nittai Prabhu, joyfully relish the auspicious topics of Lord Krishna. Viharena Krishna Kata Mangala Prasange. The Bhagavad Gita contains the Tattva, the Tattva Siddhanta of Bhakti, especially in the seven chapters in the middle, chapter seven to excuse me, the six chapters in the middle, chapters 7 to 12, is all about bhakti. And in those chapters, there's the Chatu Shloka verses of the Bhagavad Gita, the ten key verses, which some acharyas say are all about the Braja Gopis, their activities and their absorption and their seeing Krishna and everything. And everything comes from Krishna, including Mahabhav and Sringharas, Ahamsarvasya Prabhavo. Not only the Aishvarya and majesty and opulence of the creation and universe of all its vibhutis and powers and Vrata Rupam and these fantastic avatars and Purush avatars, but even the essence of, the essence of everything comes from Krishna. The essence of everything is not merely creative power and creative expression, but the essence of everything is love. And the essence of Krishna's love is Radha. And the essence of Radharani's love is Mahabhav. And the essence of Mahabhav is Unmad. Unmadani Radha. So this is told in the ten, chapter 10 of Bhagavad Gita, verse 8. Everything comes from me. Ham Sarvasya Prabhu. Up to that extent. Up to the extent of Radharani and her Mahabhav. Which is her sole contribution to Krishna's essential experience of love, which is the Braja Prem of the gopis. And then it goes on, and then it says, Machita Matkata Pranas Bodhiyantas Parantapa. Kata, Kata Yanta, how's it go? Kata Yanta Shamam Nityam Tushanti Cha, Ramanti Cha. And this verse, it says that the the devotees, they, the Machita Matkata Pranas Bodhiyantas Parantapa, Prasparam. The uh, devotees, they derive great relish and bliss by talking about Krishna. And no one does that more than the gopis. They develop so much relish, they become so much kata vesh, lila vesh, that they enter the kata so deeply when they speak about Krishna that they actually see him. And they're so deeply entering into the Ramanti experience, tushanti cha, ramanti cha, the tush, tushyanti, that hearts meant that's heart mind satisfaction that only they can know because of their intimate connection with Krishna. They also experience Ramanti. Ramanti means conjugal bliss. So when they're talking with about Krishna amongst themselves, this Gopis Gopis Prasanga it says Mangala Prasange that when Nitai and Advaita came together that was considered Mangala Prasange. They're very tightly connected in the most auspicious form of union, which is centered around the glorification of Radha and Krishna and Vrindavan. And this is their Vihar Krishna Kata. This is their own Vihar, Maharange Vihar. Nitai and Awaita were relishing these topics, so no one relishes the topics of Krishna Kata more than the gopis, and they experience, for them, the Mangala Prasange, the topmost expression of auspicious association is Ramanti. And that's the intimate divine union of Krishna and Radharani and Madhurya Ras. 
That is the Mangala Prasanga, most auspicious Prasanga. And when one talks about, when the gopis are talking about Krishna and Krishna Gata, they are really Machita Matkata Pranas. Their Chitta is fixed in Krishna. Mat, Machita means Mamchita. Their consciousness is fixed in me, the gopis. This verse describes the gopis, chapter 10 of Bhagavad Gita, verse 9. Machita Matkata Pranas. And their prana is mixed in my, my prana. Their hearts are mixed in my heart. And that means pranaya. Sneha, man, pranaya. Rag, anurag, bhav, mahabhav. These are seven steps of prema. So they, so much they're mixed and hearts are melted with Krishna. When they're engaged in harikata, in separation from Krishna, their hearts are so much melted and so much unified in oneness, one pran, ek pran, with Krishna, they experience ranga. They experience the conjugal delight of union with Krishna, even in the kata amongst themselves. So in the same way, or a similar way, Advaita Prabhu and Nityananda were joyfully relishing the auspicious topics of Lord Krishna. And this is going on, devotees. So we see the Gita, although on one level, I was giving an example of the Leela of Gita, but Gita establishes a principle that when, when devotees, when it's a generic, it's a statement, it's an axiom, when devotees get together and talk about me, and absorb their consciousness in me, uh, kata, and talking about me, then what happens? They feel satisfaction and complete inner bliss and joy. Mental satisfaction, heart's elation, heart's joy, and full bliss in the heart. Peaceful, peaceful fulfilled minds and satisfied and saturated, hap- hearts ha- saturated with happiness by engaging in Hari Kata. Now that's the precept. Now what's the example? So the example is the Srimad Bhagavatam and in Venu Gita when the gopis are speaking about Krishna or Brahma Gita or in this uh, Pranaya Gita when the gopis are separated from Krishna in the Rasa dance that was in chapter 29 and the gopis are separated and are searching for him. There is Pranaya Gita I believe chapter 29 and they're asking oh have you seen the Krishna and then they became Krishna they became so much absorbed in Krishna one gopi became Krishna and the other took them under Yoga Maya's influence took the Bhava Putana I'll kill you hey out from here Kaliya one became Kaliya so they became so much merged and much chitta much gata prana that their prana and chitta completely became Krishna's chitta pran so this is the this, that's why it's called Pranaya Gita there's this section up where the gopis are speaking this is their Pranaya which reveals their Pranaya Prema their intense Shringar, Prema, and Pranaya. And that's in, uh, that's in the 10th in the canto. There's so many Gitas. So that's chapter 29. And then well, we can just exactly... It's chapter 29. And 20, 29 is Pranaya Gita. Chapter 31 is Yugal Gita. I mean, Gopi Gita. And 35 is Yugal Gita. And then we have 30, not, 47 is, is Brahma Gita and chapter 39 is Viraha Gita. So this Pranaya Gita is there in chapter 29, which is the beginning of the Rasa dance. Krishna meets with them and then he dances with, starts, starts to walk with them and then suddenly he, Radharani disappears and he leaves, finds Radharani, then he favors her and offers to carry her wherever she wants to go. Then he disappears and they go mad searching for him. So this is the Pranaya Gita. This is a story of Maharaj Bharata and the black deer. While still in the prime of youth, it said he was 24 years old, Bharat Maharaj gave up his beautiful wife, palace, kingdom and all royal opulence. He retired alone to the Haridwar and spent his time at Pulaha Ashram. He used to collect various flowers and twigs and tulsi leaves and water from Gandaki and offer these things to Krishna. He was very satisfied. He had no desires for material pleasure. By his continual bhakti, he developed love for Krishna and experience some symptoms of bhava. His hair would stand on end and tears would flow from his eyes. 
He was always meditating in the beautiful reddish lotus feet of Lord Krishna. He forgot, it says, when his mind dove into the lake of ecstatic love, he forgot about the rules and regulations of Vaidhi, because he's living on a platform of Bhav. Maharaj Bharat looked very beautiful, dressed in deer skin. One day, while he was chanting, a pregnant black doe was running in fear of a lion's roar. When that doe leaped across the river, it dropped a baby in the water because she was pregnant. It was a miscarriage. Maharaj Bharat felt compassion for that struggling deer, baby deer. He brought it back to his ashram and he used to take care of it. He was feeding it grass and protecting the deer and became very affectionate towards it. He was always trying to arrange for the comfort and he would sometimes even kiss the deer out of love. He was so absorbed in caring for his deer that he gradually forgot Krishna and gave up all his practices of spiritual life. He was thinking, oh, this poor deer has no relatives. It knows no one but me. I am the father, mother, brother, and relative of this deer. The deer has full faith in me. I must take care of it and raise it properly. So he was so attached to the deer that Maharaj Bharat, he would sleep with the deer, bathe, he bathed it, walked with it, even ate his food with the deer. He is completely bound with intense love to this deer. He always took the deer with him into the forest to protect him. He was attracted to the childish behavior of the deer. Sometimes he carried on his shoulders, keep it on his lap while he was sleeping upon his chest. He felt great pleasure from fondling the little animal. It sounds like people and their dogs in America. He was always careful. If he was doing some activities, he would get up and search for the deer to make sure he was safe and sound. And at night he would bestow blessings on the deer. May you be happy in all respects. One day at sunset he couldn't find the deer and he became mad searching for it. He started remembering the playful antics of the deer and said, Oh, when will that deer come back to pacify my burning heart? When I was pretending to meditate, the deer would fearfully touch me with the points of his soft horns. He got up from his reverie and searched for the deer. And he saw the footprints of the deer and started glorifying them. And he saw the dark spots on the moon that reminded him of his black deer baby friend. Somehow he... Due to his past sins, he gave up the worship of Krishna. His Prabhda karma came to him. Or let's say, in closer inspection, we could say that due to his intense attachment to that deer, he started to neglect his spiritual life. He was wandering about, searching for the deer. In the middle of the night, he fell off the, a cliff and he was dying, lying upon the ground. And suddenly the deer came sitting next to him, lamenting like a son watching his father about to die. Bart Mar- Maharaj became absorbed in thinking of the deer. And next life he became a deer. The black deer, who was formerly known as Bharat Maharaj, the emperor of the earth. It's a very special deer that somehow or other he didn't forget his previous life. He could remember all the past activities and sometimes he would repent within his mind. That little black deer would think in his mind, Oh, I fell down from bhakti in my last life. Gave up my palace and family and everything and practiced Krishna consciousness. But due to my foolishness, I got attached to this deer and I became one. So repenting in that way, that deer eventually became detached or let's say that atma became detached from the deer's body. He returned to the ashram, Pulaha Ashram at Haridwar. And that uh, deer, let's say Maharaj Bharat, or the Atma of Maharaj Bharat in that deer, he was uh, carefully avoided any bad association. Finally he gave up his deer's body, and in that body of a deer he was praying as follows, as Gajendra in the 
Eighth Canto of Bhagavatam also remembered some prayers that he had previously recited when he was inhabiting the human body of a king in his previous life. Somehow he remembered. So somehow Maharaj Bharat, now stuck in the body of a deer, could remember a beautiful prayer. And he spoke that at his last moment before dying in his dear body. The Supreme Personality of Sri Krishna is the controller of the entire creation. And Sri Krishna is the Supreme Soul residing in every living entity. Bhagavan Sri Krishna is the personification of sacrifice and mystic yogi, yoga. And Krishna is so beautiful, Sham Sundar. Now, by destiny, I am leaving this body of a deer, offering obeisances to my Lord Sri Krishna, and hoping that I may perpetually engage in Sri Krishna's eternal loving service. Janpadiya Takura Padila Ganga Maje Nityananda Haridasa Janpadila Pache Mahabru jumped in the Ganga and Nityananda and Haridas jumped in behind him. Atevyat Atevyate Nityananda Dari Lena Keshe Charna Chapia Dari Prabhu Haridase. Beautiful scene if we're seeing this because I often tell about absorbing ourselves in scriptures and just try to envision, visualize the scene. They're in Shiva Sangam which is across the street, across the field, the Ganga was flowing there at Mahaprabhu Ghat and Jagai Madai Ghat. It's only 100 meters, 200 meters dash, 300 meters dash to the Ganga in those days, maybe less. Well, very fast, very quickly, Nuri Gauranga was in, ran, his hair flying, his long hair, his shoulder length long black hair flying, his yellow chatter and dhoti. He's running, oh, so much distressed look on his face, diving in the Ganga and this old Haridas, this old person, somewhat old, quite a bit older, Nityananda, 10, 12 years old or so, 20 years older maybe, running behind him with a blue dhoti and Haridas wearing white, like lungi and skinny old guy. And they're running, short, skinny, I guess, I don't know, hard to say, I don't know how skinny he was. But <laughs> probably had nice features. But they're running and they jump in. And what What happened? Nityananda caught Mahabharu by his hair. Kesh Dari, like Haladar, Murlidar, Kesh Dari, grabbed him by the hair. And Haridas grabbed the Lord's lotus feet. Grabbed him by the hair. That means there's some hair, some long hair there, not just a Sika. Dui Jane Dariya, Tui Lanai Tire, Prabhupali Tomarava, Dari Le Kishere. Nitai and Haridas carried Mahabharu out of the water, whereupon the Lord said, Why did you restrain me? Why did you hold me? Ki kariye rakiba prima, rahita jivan, ki sere vatomara, darile duijan. For what purpose should I maintain this life, which is devoid of love of God? Why did you two hold me back when I wanted to drown in the janava, in janavi? Naprema gando stita rapi me haro, trandami so bhagya baram prakashitum, pam shivilas yanana lokanam vina, bibharme yat prana patanga kan brita. This is Madhya Lila Mahabhu speaking. My dear friends, Naprema, naprema ganda, I do not have the slightest scent of love of God, prema ganda, na prema ganda, darapi me haro. I do not have the slightest tinge of love of God within my heart, not even the slightest fragrance. When you see me crying in separation, I am just falsely making a show. I'm exhibiting my great fortune, krandhami sobhagya bharam prakashitam. Krandhami, I'm crying, kranda. But it's sobhagya. It's, I'm just trying to show my sobhagya, my good fortune. How, how fortunate, how laden with good fortune I am. Sobhagya, bharam, prakashitam. But it's all a show. It's all false. Indeed, 
not seeing the beautiful face of Krishna playing his flute. Vamsi vilas, anana lokanam vina. So lokana means seeing. Without seeing, anana means face. Vamsi vilas, without seeing that face of Shamsundar who's engaged in pastimes. So love, Vamsi vilas, in his love filled pastimes of playing his Vamsi. I continue to live. I'm not seeing his face. I'm only making a show, crying. I don't have a scent, of, even the slightest fragrance or scent of love of God. I'm only making a show. I'm not. Indeed, actually, I'm not even seeing the beautiful face of Krishna playing his flute. Vam Shivilas Yanana Loknam Bina. Yet, I continue to live. Therefore, my life has no purpose. My life is just like an insect. Bibharma yat prana patanga 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 kan bita. Patanga means butterfly. Patanga. So they call kites are called patanga also. means butterfly. So this was a reply of Mahaprabhu after he was rescued from drowning in the Ganga by Nityananda Abhidut and Haridas. Haridas grabbed the Lord's lotus feet and Nityananda grabbed him by the hair, held him by his, wrapped up his hair, his top knot, and they dragged him out. Dui jane maha kampa aji ki bafale Nityananda dega chahi Gora chandra bale Haidas Nitai trembled as I thought, what will happen today? Looking at Nityananda, Gorachandra spoke. Tumikini Darila Amara Kesha Bhare Nityananda Bale Kene Jaha Mari Bhare Mahabharata said, why did you grab my hair? Nityananda replied, why did you try to kill yourself? Prabhu Bale Jani Tumi Parama Bival Nityananda Bale Prabhu Shamahak Sakal Mahabharu said, I know you are most restless. Nityananda said, O oh Lord, Prabhu, please forgive me. Jare Shasti Karibari Parasara Mate Taralagi Chalad Nija Shari Re Chadite. Nityananda continued, Do you want to give up your body? Because of someone that you can easily punish? Abhimane Seva Kera Balilava Chan Prabhu Tahi Lahibeki Brichera Jivan If servants speak something out of pride, does their master take their lives? He's referring to Advaitas. Prema Maya Nityananda Wahi Prema Jal Jara Prana Dhana Bandhu Chaitanya Sakal Filled with devotion for, for filled with devotion, Nityananda shed tears of love for Lord Chaitanya, who was everything for him, his life, his wealth, and his friend. Jara Pran, Jara Dan, Jara Bandhu. So his very life force is Lord Chaitanya, his very wealth of his life, and meaning of his life is Lord Chaitanya, and his only friend and most dear friend is Lord Chaitanya. Prabhu Bale Shuna Nityananda Haridas Karo Stane Karapache Amara Prakash Mahabhu said Listen Nityananda and Haridas Do not tell anyone that you have seen me I think they want he wants everyone to think that he drowned Amana Dekila Bali Bali Bhavachan Amara Agaya E Kahiba Katan Mahabhru goes on Tell everyone that you did not see me You follow this order of mine Muniyaji Sangope Takibe Eitani Kare Pache Kahajari Mora Doshanai Today I will hide here If you tell anyone Then do not blame me for the consequences Hey Bali Prabhu Nan Tanera Ghare Jai Hey Dui Sangop Koila Prabhu Agyai After speaking in this way, the Lord went to the house of Nandanacharya. Following the Lord's order, 
Haridas Nittai kept a secret. Bhakta Sabana Paya Prabhura Udesh Dukkamaya Haila Sabe Sri Krishna Avesh Absorbed in love for Krishna Sabe Sri Krishna Vesh all became full of distress when they were unable to receive any news about the Lord. So they were absorbed in love of God. That's their stayivav, their permanent devotional position. But when they didn't get any news, Prabhu Udesh, they became dukkamaya, full of duk, unhappiness. What a beautiful scenery it is. You know, if you're watching a movie, you know, there's three are there and the Lord runs out and then and then they Nitai and Haridas come back and they say, Well what happened? Where's the Lord? Don't I don't know. Didn't see him. Disappeared somewhere. I think Oh really? Yeah, really. I'm, oh this is terrible. Parama Virahe Sabe Karena Krandan Kea Kichunabalaye Pode Sarvaman all the devotees began to cry due to feelings of intense separation. Parama virahai sabha karina krandan. No one said anything as their hearts burned. Pode sarvaman. Their hearts and minds were burning. They couldn't speak, they couldn't say anything. All were crying, crying, crying. Ah, ah, ah. Sabara upara jena haila brajapat. Maha Aparada Haila Shanti Puranat. Everyone felt like they had been struck by a lightning bolt, Vajrapat, and had waited the Lord of Shantipur, Shantipur Nath, thought himself a great offender, because this was the whole exchange between Advaita and Mahaprabhu. And Mahaprabhu was complaining on not feeling any love. And then Advaita said, No, we're all we all have the love. You have the love also, what are you saying? And then then not understanding or Advaita is feeling now, oh, I, I've caused the Lord to disappear from everyone. So now he's feeling himself a great offender, Maha Aparad. Aparada Haiya Prabhu Prabhura Virahe Upavasa Karigya Takilena Grihe Feeling that he had committed an offense, Advaita Prabhu went home and fasted due to intense separation from the Lord. It's amazing how Vrindavan Thakur, in so many different instances, he talks about offenses. Of course, on this level, this is all Leela. There's no question of offenses. How can one who loves loves you completely and you love them completely, there's no question of any actual apparat or offenses possible in the true sense. But he talks about it where there's actual offenders. Devotees, sometimes these Pashandis, they offend devotees, Gopal Chapala and uh, Haridas was offended and some people get leprosy and their noses fall off and, and Devananda Pandit made an offense to Srivas and threw him out of the assembly in the Bhagavatam Saptaha. So there are actually genuine Vaishnava Aparats committed and there's so much warning and care being taken to describe them and to alert us to the severity of making Vaishnava Aparat. But then there's even offenses being discussed among the Lord and His eternal associates. This is, of course, much more difficult to understand. But their responses are something we can learn from, that that if, if one makes an offense, he feels bad. And if he doesn't feel bad, that means he's not, he's not a devotee. Because <laughs> this is all about devotees. When devotees make offense, they feel bad. The genuine devotees. So with Vaita, of course, with Bhakta... Pancha Tattva Kam Krishna Bhakti Rupa Sarupa Kam Bhakta Avatar and Bhakta Kim and Mami Bhakti Shakti Kam it says Bhakta Avatar and Advaita they're all Bhaktas they're all the greatest devotees of the Lord so they feel that oh I must have made some apparat to the Lord and then what are, how do they respond to that oh, okay I, I offended this guy so what I mean, life goes on where's the Mahaprasad <laughs> no they, they don't they don't they, they don't eat they can't eat they don't think, oh, okay, hey, you know, you really offended that devotee the other day. Ah, that's what you say. I mean, he's just sensitive. He's hypersensitive. I didn't offend him. That's, you know, come on, let's, let's take Prasad. Don't worry about that. So we may have these kind of responses in our modern day times uh, due to our own lack of devotion and perception, devotional perception. But he felt that he committed an offense. And how did he respond to that feeling? Did he overlook it and 
shrug it off and pass it off. No, he went home and fasted. He started fasting due to intense separation from the Lord. Sabe chali la gare, shoka kuli haya, goranga charana dana, ridaye bandia, filled with lamentation, shok. Everyone returned to their homes with the treasure of Goranga's lotus feet bound in their hearts. That's certainly a desirable treasure for all of us to have bound in our hearts. Goranga Charana Dhan, that's the treasure of Goranga's lotus feet. Goranga Charana Dhan, and where do we want that treasure? Ridaye Bandi, Bandia, Band, Band, Sambanda, tied up, locked up, secured in our hearts. Ridaye, Ridaye Bandia. That treasure we pray for, we hope for. Goranga Charana Dhan. Takura Aila Nandan Achayera Ghare Vasila Asiya Vishnu Kattara Upari. Mahaprabhu arrived at Nandanacharya's house, which incidentally is about one kilometer down the street from Shiva's Pandit's house. So he's not that far away from everyone. <laughs> He's gone not even maybe one kilometer on the same street. You can visit that house, Nandanacharya's house. It's after you go past this kind and keep going a little further. Next major temple on your left is Nandanacharya's Bhavan or the temple commemorating that. That's where Nityananda was hiding, remember? Nityananda Nityananda came, he was on pilgrimage of India and was in Vrindavan, Nityananda Vat, Sringarvat. Then when he understood that Lord Chaitanya was now initiated by Ishra Puri at the age of about 19 or 20 years old. Lord Chaitanya returned to Navadvip and he was an, a new man, changed person. And he had closed his Sanskrit school and become interested in Sankirtan. And then Nityananda returned to join him. <clears throat> the time was right. Lord uh, Mahabharata was about 19 and Nityananda was about 30 or so, 35. So Nityananda came and hid himself in Nandanacharya's house. And he wanted to see if the Lord could find him. It was that famous pastime where Lord Chaitanya said, Oh, some great personality has come to Mayapur. Everyone go search for him. So everyone went house to house. This is an earlier pastime. They are searching for this great personality. And then he came back and said, Mahabharata, we went to every house. We searched everywhere. We can't find this great personality you're speaking of. He said, All right, come with me. And Mahapuru, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu started a big kirtan party and they went down the street about one kilometer, marched into the, into the courtyard, into the vestibule of Nandanacharya's house and, start, and Lord Chaitanya start, started chanting, Nittai, Nittai, Nittai. Then Nityananda came out from hiding and said, Goranga, Goranga. And then they embraced. It was a beautiful meeting. And everyone said, who is this Nittai? Avadut. So that's where they met. So now Lord Chaitanya is going to the same house and hiding himself also in Nandanacharya's house. So what did he do when he got there? He went there and he sat on the singhasan of Lord Vishnu. Nandana dekhiya grihe parama mangal dandavatahaya padila bumital Seeing that the most auspicious personality has arrived in his house, Nandanacharya offered obeisances by offering dandavats on the ground. Satvare dilena ani nutanaya Vasana Tita Vastra Edilena Sri Shachinandan. Nandanacharya quickly brought new clothes for Sri Shachinandan, who then changed his wet clothes. Remember, remember this, because it's all, we're reading it verse by verse, but it's all happening quite fast. Lord Chaitanya ran out of Sri Vastakura's house, jumped, ran across the street, jumped in the Ganga, Haridas. And Nityananda grabbed him by the hair and feet, pulled him out, had some dialogue with him. And then he ran away and told him, keep it a secret, don't say where I've gone. Keep, don't tell anyone. So now the Lord's run away. So then the camera switches to the, the devotees. Well, how do they respond to this? They're all crying. They can't speak anything. And they're very unhappy and they're full of lamentation, shoka and dukkha and unhappiness. So they all go to the back of their homes. They leave Shiva Sangha. There's no reason to live anymore. They go back to their homes and collapse on the ground and start crying in great separation from Mahaprabhu. Then Awaitacharya, now the camera switched to Awaitacharya's face, and he's so hanging his head down. 
he's feeling very unhappy. Oh, it's all my fault. All the devotees are lamenting and are in separation. It's all my fault. I made such a Mahaparad. And he's crying. Now this camera switched to another Acharya's house and the Lord's coming in the front front gate and and running in, and running into the temple running into the temple because Nanda Acharya is a bit, temple of Lakshmi Narayan. And Lord Chaitanya runs into the temple and sits on the, the singhasan. Nanda Acharya hears all the commotion. Oh my Lord has come. Immediately offers Dandabats. Then to greet the Lord he, oh he's oh his clothes are all wet and he immediately goes for service. Bring some new clothes because the clothes the Lord's clothes are all wet because he jumped in the gunga with his clothes on. And beautiful scenery. I mean unbelievable scenes if you were to, to watch all this in the movie. So tomorrow we'll hear more of the story of how Gurungam Hapu was received by Nanda Nacharya. Sri Chaitanya Bhagavad Ki. So at wait to, he replies to this to this statement of Mahabharu. Mahapatra Advaita Brukuti Karinache Kimate Kaiba Prema Nara Shushi Jache Advaita Prabhu, the great recipient of the Lord's mercy, frowned and and danced as he said, How will you feel ecstatic love when Nara has drained you? So this is Nara is, of course, his own name. Nara, Narayan, Lord Vishnu. Muni nahi pana prema, napaya shivas, tilimali sane kara, prema ravilas, avaduta tomar prema, haila dhas, ami se bahira ara, pandita shivas, ami sava nahilana, prema adhikari, avaduta si haila prema rabhandari, jari more prema joga. Nadehe Gosai, Shushiba Sakala Prema Mora Dosha Nai. And wait, it goes on. I do not get love of God, and neither does Shiva's Thakur. Mahaprabhu, you enjoy your pastimes of ecstatic love with oil millers and gardeners. Avadut, Nitai, has become the servant of your love, while Shiva's and I are left out. We are not qualified to attain your love. While this Avadut has come and become the storekeeper of your love. <laughs> He's a prema bandhari. Avadut asi haila prema bandhari. O oh, Gosai, this means Mahaprabhu, if you do not award me your ecstatic love, I will dry it all up. Then do not blame me. <laughs> so, uh, this is again... This is from the grandfather. Of, this is Advaita Charja speaking some sarcasm, some humor. He's in a tech, it sounds like he's criticizing, actually, he's glorifying Mahavaru. He's saying, You associate with people of lower castes. Therefore, Srivas Thakur and I, who are Brahmanas, we're not receiving your love. You're, you're busy distributing your love to. The drunkards and miscreants. Abadud Nittai has become the only beneficiary of your love. Only you've given your love to him. If you, do, if you do not bestow your love on me, then I'll take it all away. I'll drain it all out. Chaitan Jera Prema Mata Acharya Gosai Ki Balaye Ki Karaye Kichu Smriti Nai Advaita Gosai was maddened with Lord Chaitanya's love. Prema Mata, Chaitanya Prema Mata. He did not remember what he said or what he, what he did. <laughs> so he was, you know, he was actually speaking a little madly in his madness of love. So it didn't really make much sense everything he was saying because he was a full full recipient of Mahaprabhu's full, I mean, complete love. Sarva Mate Krishna Bhakta Mahima Badhai Bhakta Gane Jate Veche Tataiva Vikai Krishna increases the glories of his devotees in all respects. They are able to sell him wherever they want. Jai Bhakti Prabhave Krishna Vechi Bari Pare Se Jai Vakya Bali Beke Ki Vichitratari For one who can sell Krishna by the influence of his Bhakti, Bhakti Prabhav, what is unusual about speaking in this way? 
So, the way the Acharya is in bliss of bhakti, and he has so much influence. Nana rupe bhakta bhadai jena gora chandra kibujite paritana anugraha dhanda. Gora chandra increases the glories of his devotees in various ways. Who can understand his mercy and punishment? Takura vishade na paya prema suka hate tali dia nache avad advaita kotuka. As Mahabharu lamented, Due to not receiving the happiness of ecstatic love, Advaita joyfully danced while clapping his hands. <laughs> There's some intimate exchanges on their level. It's a little inconceivable what they're doing, but uh, they're enjoying nonetheless. Advaitera Vakya Shuni Prabhu Vishwambhar Arakichuna Karila Tara Pratyutar after listening to Advaita's words, Lord Vishambar did not make any reply. Sei mata radadila guchaya dhwar pache dhaya nityananda haridasa tanra. Mahabharu suddenly opened the door and ran out of Shiva Sangam. Anityananda and Haridas ran after him. So this is all the ecstatic, praying filled leelas of the Lord. It's a chinti leela, very inconceivable. Prema shunya sharira tuya kiba kaj chintiya padila prabhu janavira haj Thinking that there was no use in keeping a body devoid of love of God, the Lord jumped in the Ganga. Of course, he's teaching us to become, we should become desperate. There's a certain desperation here exuding from these verses. Obviously, the Prem Avatar, Prem Sarup, Radha Prem Sarup, Vishwambar, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Rasaraj Mahabhav, is, every pore of his body is emanating the deepest, most profound Madanakya Mahabhav, Prem of Radharani for Krishna. But he's teaching something that we're engaged in Sakratan, we're not feeling any joy, no Prem Anubhavas. Maybe it's because of Aparads, we've made Vaishnava Aparads. Maybe it's because of bad association. You think of these two points that are being discussed in the last few minutes. Bad association, Pashandis, atheists in the marketplace, atheists in our home, our family atheists, our mother and father atheists, our uncle, Pash- our, uh, uncle Pashandi, our Pashandi uncles and aunts, Pashandi brothers and sisters. So any type of bad association from any direction, in the temple, out of the temple, in the marketplace, on Sankirtan, at home, so-called relatives, relative program. So bad association or Vaishnava Parad can be two causes of worthlessness, making the body worthless. There's no life in the body. Araka Pran, Nare Raka Pran, please save my life. So if we have no life, then we're dead. Very interesting, Lord Chaitanya Singh. Bina prema anubhav. If there's no anubhav, if there's no prema anubhav coming when I'm serving Krishna, shravanam kirtana vishnu smaranam padasevanam. When I'm engaged in hearing and chanting, remembering Krishna's name and pastimes and form, if I'm not experience, experiencing any anubhavas, then what's the cause? Is it aparad? Is it offenses? Is it nama aparad, vaishnava aparad, seva aparad, dhamma aparad, jiva aparad? Or is it bad association? Do I, do I willfully take the bad association of my material desires? Do I willfully take the bad association of, of gossipers and fault finders among the devotees? Do I, willfully, do I happily take the association of materialistic, atheistic people, friends and so-called old friends and relatives? Because these are causes. And then, and then what does that mean? That means my bhakti is dead. There's no bhakti, there's no bhava, there's no anubhavas arising. So what's the point of living? There's no point in living. And if the if Vaishnavas don't forgive me, Aparat Shamiya, Shama, they don't forgive me for the, my offenses, then my life is finished. So since nothing, no prema is coming, no love is happening, this body is useless. What's the point? So let me jump into Ganges, commit suicide. The Lord is showing this. Thinking there is no use and keeping a body devoid of prema, the Lord decided to commit suicide. 
So if that was the standard of modern life, it would be a very small world population today. <laughs> if they say there's six billion people in the world, one and a half billion in China, uh, one billion in India, and the rest around here and there. So there will only be a handful left. <laughs> only be a half a dozen, two dozen, three dozen, twenty, thirty devotees left that actually have preem on this planet. And everybody else will be in the Ganges, floating dead. Or sunk, sinking dead, whatever. So we, when we read this, Mahaprabhu's intensity and his absorption, then we think, well, wait a minute, what am I, what am I doing here? I'm breathing just like the black, just like the blacksmith's bellows, the leather bags with a little pointed instrument coming out. You step on the handles, and the bags squeeze together, and push, 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 push out some hot air to keep the coals burning when you're using an anvil or making some horseshoes or something. The blacksmith, the ironsmith. So <laughs> his body is a big airbag, 60 kilo airbag. Inhalation, and exhalation, but not, no production, only air, hot air coming out. Not even hot air, sometimes bad air. <laughs> Stinky air. And not even making any fire, just uh, polluting the air with our carbon dioxide, (laughs) taking in oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide. We're not even burning coals and making horseshoes. (laughs) At least the blacksmith's bellows produces some useful product like horseshoes. Our breathing doesn't produce anything but carbon dioxide. (laughs) So there's no use. Prema shunya sharir tuyat kiva kaj chintya padila prabhu Janavi Maj. I want to merge in the Janavi means drown myself. Maja means merge. So he's Mahabharu's running at the speed of wind to jump in the Janavi. Ja Ma, Ma Janava. The Ganga and Haridas and Nityananda are running behind him. So it's Chaitanya Bhagavad. And uh, this is chapter sixteen. We've been hearing about the story of Shukambara Brahmachari and how much Lord Chaitanya appreciates his association that Shukambara apparently is the incarnation of or he's the Gaur Lila form of Sudama Das Sudama Brahman from Dwarka Krishna Lila and Lord Chaitanya came to meet Shukambara in his house and he took forcibly took some old rice that Shukambara had begged because he was living by begging he was a very impoverished person but a great devotee and to show how much appreciation and love Lord Chaitanya had for him, he personally took the rice from his hand. Kings 6, 141. And Navanas Thakur is explaining. Mudra sahita naive dhyara jatavidi veda rupe apane balena guna nidi. Lord Vishnabhar, who is a reservoir of transcendental qualities, personally explained the Vedas, through the Vedas, the rules for offering food. Interesting that Shukambara, of course, he wasn't really offering any food to Lord Chaitanya, but Lord Chaitanya was just taking some baked food that he offered. And somehow, now he goes on. Bine se vidi kichu svikara nakari sakala pratigya chorna bhaktira durjari. Vishambara does not accept anything unless it's offered according to those rules, but he breaks all those injunctions for the sake of his devotees. Shukambara Tandula Tahara Paraman Hateva Sakala Vidira Bhakti Pran Lord Vishambara's accepting Shukambara's rice is proof of this fact. Therefore, devotion is the life of all rules. Sakala Vidi Bhakti Pran. That's interesting. Sakala Vidi Bhakti Pran. That's why Rupa Goswami says in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu that the Mukya Vidi is to always remember Krishna and never forget him. So always remembering Krishna, this only someone who's in love with someone can always remember their beloved. Because you can only remember something you're attached to or someone you're attached to. If you're not attached to someone, you usually forget them. <laughs> if you're very much attached to someone, your wife or husband or whatever, and you're thinking about them through, without even any effort, doesn't require any extraneous effort or extra effort to remember someone you're very attached to. Their memory automatically rises in your mind. 
and the feelings of that memory. That memory generates spontaneous feelings in the heart also. So this is the main this is the bhakti this is the the main Sakala Vidhi Bhakti Pran. He says that devotion is the life of all rules. So if we're always always remembering Krishna or forgetting him, by always remembering Krishna then all the other rules come in place. All the other so many rules and regulations are there. And they're all just all the different ways of expressing our remembrance of Krishna. I like the four regular principles or so we're remembering Krishna. Well, Krishna is Gopal, Govinda. He takes care of cows. He's a protector of cows. So how can I eat Krishna's cows? So I have to be a vegetarian. Oh, there's so many ways. So this is the primary thing. So this is devotion. Smaranam is a limb of devotion. Krishna Smaranam is bhakti. To remember Krishna is, is, a, is bhakti. But that type of Smaranam doesn't really come. We can't really remember Krishna spontaneously until we come to the level of rati, asakti. Sakti means attachment. At the level of Nishta, we remember Krishna sometimes, but not that often. At the level of a Sakti, a Sakti Bhava. Bhava, we remember Krishna with feelings of love. That's Bhava. We're attached to Krishna with feelings of love. But a Sakti means we're attached to Krishna, the person. And Nishta means we're attached to the rules, or attached to the, the practices in sadhana that brings us to Krishna, that brings us to attachment to Krishna. Nishta goes to a sakti. I mean, Nishta goes to ruchi, ruchi goes to a sakti. So ruchi means that we're, we're attached, we're attached to the rules and regulations of sadhana and we're get, because we're getting some taste from those things. And then a sakti means we're, we're actually attached to the object of our sadhana, we're attached to Krishna. A ruchi comes, becomes ruchi for Krishna, taste, actual taste for Krishna, not taste for the limbs of devotion, but taste for devotion itself. Taste for chanting about Krishna or hearing about Krishna becomes taste for Krishna. Trishna for Krishna. Trishna, Trishna means taste. So this is the interesting thing he's saying here. Sakala Vidhi Bhakti Pran. He says that devotion is the life of all rules. And you can sustain like labor of love, they say. <coughs> the burden of carrying a baby in the womb of a mother that's a heavy burden to carry that's called the labor of love burden of love she doesn't mind carrying the weight and difficulty of pregnancy because of her love for the child even before he's born so this is it. Lord Chaitanya he loved Shuklambara so this is, this is the ultimate rule is that he loved, he loved his devotee and whatever the devotee has he accepted even some old dried inferior quality rice that was begged, not even cooked. He took it, immediately took it from Shukambara and partook of it, ate it. Jatavidi Nisheda Sakli Bhakti Das Ihateja Haraduka Se Jayanash All rules and regulations are servants of devotional service. One who is distressed because of this is vanquished. Veda Vyasa has stated that devotion is the root of all rules, and Granga has directly demonstrated this in his pastime. Smarta Vyasa Tatam Vishnur Saravidi Nishedis Yur Pismata Vyo Jatujit Etiyur Evakim Kara. Krishna is the origin of Lord Vishnu. He should always be remembered and never forgotten at any time. All rules and prohibitions mentioned in the Shastra should be the servants of these two principles. So this is a nice, nice point. I guess this is one of the main points of this pastime about the the offering, this offering of rice. Aside from hearing all the actual qualities and characteristics of Shukumar Brahmachari, but the main teaching of this chapter seems to be this interaction, this pastime, Leela, that he had with Lord Chaitanya, taking his rice, and the points, the philosophical points, that we have to learn from that. Mudrana ekari vipranadila apane tarapi tandula prabhu kaila jatane The Brahmana Shuklambara did not offer the rice with mudras, nor did he even offer it. Yet nevertheless, the Lord eagerly ate it. 
विषय मन मन धन दसव हे मर्मा न जाने सूट दन खुला मरे वैष्णव न चिने Persons who are blinded by the pride of material enjoyment cannot understand this mystery. Intoxicated by their children, wealth, and family prestige, they cannot recognize the Vaishnava. As no one recognized Shukambara, they thought he was some beggar. He was such a great Vaishnava that the Lord came to his house and ate some, forcibly took some rice from his hand and ate it, ate the offering which wasn't even offered, and wasn't even offerable. By Arch and Marg standards, the rice was not it's supposed to be first class rice you offer to the deities. It wasn't even offerable. It wasn't even cooked. <laughs> Usually rice has to be cooked before it's offered to the Lord. So although other devotees, so-called devotees in Navadweep, they were making offerings to their Shalagram or offerings to their Murtis very properly, here we see the Lord is going to the house of his devotee. Directly, Saksha Darshan, and taking directly the offering. Deki Murka Daridra J. Vaishnavere Hase Tara Puja Vita Kabu Krishnere Navhase. Krishna never accepts the offerings and worship of one who ridicules a Vaishnava, considering him poor or foolish. Some Ramdas Thakur is saying that. There are so many people, Vaishnavas, living there nearby and around Shuklambara, but they were ridiculing him for being a poor beggar. And they're making offerings, but here Vrindavan Das Thakur is saying they don't even, don't even, Krishna is not even accepting their offerings. So it's devotion, of course, that the Lord is interested in.